Hi, I'm Taylor Hanumzatz, and we're back with another episode of Between the Bookshelves. And today I'm here with Dr. Logan. Um, so just go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Sure. I'm Dr. Lauren H. Logan. I like the H. It's my mom's last name. It's Hartledge, so I always include my H. And I'm in civil and environmental engineering. I study the water energy nexus. So for those of you that don't know, I know you know, but yeah, those of you yeah. that don't know, Basically, the idea that to have water, we need energy to treat the water, to clean it, all those things. And then for energy, we need water to cool down power plants, to help with mining processes. So that's really kind of my big picture. And some classes I teach, I teach our first year class during my geotech class yep. right now. And I do some of our water classes and energy classes. Yeah, next semester I'll be in that one. Um, so how long have you been at ONU? This is my fifth year here, okay. so enjoying that almost tenured <laughs> process. You're getting close, getting close. So what do you like to do like outside of teaching when you're not in the classroom or doing your research? Let's see, outside of class, I am really big into amusement parks. Mm -hmm. So my husband Dan and I will go to Cedar Point all the time, ride lots of roller coasters. This summer we went to a few other amusement parks to kind of check off on our list. And I also really enjoy reading a lot, especially like creepy novels, so I really like the horror genre, and together Dan and I watch a lot of horror movies. <laughs> what was your most like recent one that you read? Uh, well, let's see, right now I'm reading Dead Lake, okay. so that's one I'm, I'm currently like partway through, so we got to see why the lake's dead. I don't know yet. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. Um, so we're going to do a couple fun questions, so if you could be any Avenger, what would you be? So Avengers, I love Avengers. I know. We just did <laughs> Thor for Halloween, you saw the pictures. Yes, yes. And I have to say that I really am a big Thor fan, so Thor would be at the top of my list. Also Black Widow. I really love Black Widow. Why? Like, what's the reasoning? I just, she's so <laughs> strong and independent. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that she can kick butt and do really cool stuff, but also still cares about other people. Like, mm -hmm. that human element. I really like that. What were, like, the Halloween costumes this year? I know you do, like, a theme every year. Yeah, so we did Thor, and mm -hmm. we did the, each person was a different version of Thor. Okay. So I was Mighty Thor, and Dan was Thor from Infinity War, mm -hmm. so he had the eye patch and everything. And then our pets, we always dress up the pets, so Aragorn the dog was 80s Thor, Gandalf the cat was Dad Bod Thor, because Gandalf's got just a little bit of a pooch, he's a little bit of a bigger cat, and Greg the cat was like original Thor, like kind of that first when we met Thor many years ago. Okay. I'm just starting to get into the adventure movies. I'm, I'm too in. So, um, so can you, I know you already talked about it a little bit, but like kind of explain your research um, and why did you decide to study the water energy nexus? So my research with the water energy nexus, the reasons I really got into it was I liked this big picture, kind of solving some of our world problems and thinking about it at that large scale, the infrastructure scale and thinking about these trade-offs. Everything's a trade-off, so you'll learn that in class next semester. That's kind of the tagline. <laughs> Everything's a trade-off. That to solve one problem, you have to solve several others. And so that's really interesting to me, that there's no one right answer, but there's a lot of tools and techniques and ideas that we can do to make progress. And I think that's a key element of engineering, is that progress is being made it's not necessary that you have that one right answer. So like with water and energy, you could say, well, let's get rid of all the thermoelectric power plants, which would be coal, nuclear, and natural gas. Then we wouldn't need all this water. Okay, well, if it's not sunny, then solar isn't gonna come online. Natural gas has had price fluctuations. So there's all these other things at play. So there's no one perfect solution, but we can make progress and make our grid greener mm -hmm. and, and you know, improve things like more wind and solar. We still need coal and nuclear for now, so mm -hmm. uh, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, it's always changing too. Um, so what is something about your work that like a lot of people just don't really know about? I would say some of the biggest things that people don't realize, just for the, you know, right off the bat is people don't think about power needing water. So that's like step one is have that conversation of, the fact that to cool power plants you need water and the mining process you need water mm -hmm. and so I think that gets lost or just isn't a detail people are aware of and then when we dig deeper some of the things that people are pretty interested in is that a lot of these trade-offs do have those environmental impacts and so I've studied some of those specifics looking at aquatic ecology and how our power grid influences our water resources 
And so that's a piece that, again, a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. or think about, but then when I talk about it with them, it, it usually sparks interest, mm -hmm. and I hope that they take that message home with them to learn more. Yeah, yeah, no, before talking with you, I never never would have thought about, like, the nexus between water and energy, too, so that was something that I learned. Um, and then just, like, what's your favorite part about your work at ONU? I love the interaction with students. Mm -hmm. I have always wanted to teach so that classroom interaction, the ability to do things like this even, yeah. like this is what I love doing is inspiring students, working with students, having conversations, helping students become the best version that they can be of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I, I came for a visit to ONU, actually, and I met with you um, on the visit, too. And then when I came, then you were my advisor and had you for computer apps and everything. So that was something that also like, drew me to ONU is that, like, professor-student relationship yeah. as well. Yeah, and your parents were with you on yep, the visit. And exactly. I remember talking to them, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so our final question would just be, like, why ONU? What do you love about being here? Like, what brought you here in the first place? For me, the emphasis on students. We are a student-centered university. Mm -hmm. It's about the student experience and how we as professors, how staff, how anybody working here can help make the student's experience better. And I really appreciate that because that's what I want to do. And I see the value in that so that when you, you know, grow up and go <laughs> off and have your big person job, you will have the skills you need to be the best. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It was great to talk with you a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, thanks. You too. Yeah.